So unfortunately, the Minnesota Vikings video is not going to be done today. However, I got some tricks up my sleeve. I did have a Packernet podcast YouTube channel that I decided, you know what, let's just merge it with this one, right? Why have two competing things, especially when this one's already kind of built up and monetized and all that stuff. But I put a couple videos over there. Why don't I bring them over here? See, I, I got to figure it out. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to bring over one of those videos, and this is looking at... Aaron Rodgers and Jordan Love. Um, this is shortly after the draft and kind of had some time to process what was going on looking back at Jordan Love and kind of just looking at not only why they might have done it, but kind of what we're getting in Jordan Love and sort of the differences between them. You know, th there's a lot of talk about their similarities, right? The, the throwing off the back foot and all that kind of stuff and how they're very compatible. But there's some real big differences between the two. And I think the difference between the two speaks to what Matt LaFleur is and what he's looking for. So it's kind of a, uh, a fun video to, for me anyways, to look back on and um, to maybe revisit, especially now that there's a lot of talk with Aaron Rodgers and Jordan Love and all that stuff. So without any further ado, please check out the Packernet podcast for more uh, Packer type stuff if you're into that. Otherwise, uh, subscribe to this channel and uh, we'll get started. All right, so I'm not going to be doing a podcast today. What I'm going to be doing is a little video thing for the Facebook page slash group. Um, I thought about doing a hybrid video slash podcast, something that I could upload the audio as a uh, podcast and kind of do both at the same time. But I really wanted to do this. And what I wanted to address is something that I talked about in the group, which is the, the talk about how Jordan Love fits the system better than Aaron Rodgers and what the issue is with Aaron Rodgers and um, what Aaron Rodgers essentially needs to change. It's, it's not a question of arm talent because Aaron Rodgers has all the talent in the world. It's a question of when I draw something up and it works, in other words, I, I, I draw it up so that this guy goes here, this guy goes here, this guy goes here, this guy should be open, he's open, you throw it, right? It, there's not a lot of thinking involved. It's just a matter of just do it. Um, and so... What I want to do is show Aaron Rodgers, show the offense, kind of just get a general feel of what this offense looks like, and then go look at Jordan Love and that offense just to kind of show the contrast, right? Because it's easy to just sit here and say, well, you know, they're in rhythm and this person isn't in rhythm and all that. Just It just feels different, and I want you to be able to see it. And so why I'm picking the Raiders game is because what I actually started with was the Bears game week one because that was Aaron Rodgers' slowest time to throw according to next-gen stats. But... Week one was kind of, people could make a lot of excuses. They weren't really used to the offense yet. A lot of things were going bad. The defense was just kind of stifling them. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to take away all excuses. What was the Green Bay Packers' best offensive um, performance? And I, I tend to think, I mean, it was their highest scoring game, but this was a great game for the offense. But even when they're doing well, there's still a general feel, right? It's not all just about Aaron Rodgers did a bad job. Even when he's doing things well, you still get a feeling for what it looks like when it's doing well. And then again, contrast that to what Matt LaFleur wants it to look like when it's doing well. So there you go. That's why we're here. This is now the first offensive series or, well, yeah, the first offensive series and the first pass play for the Green Bay Packers. And there's, there's kind of a dueling thing with Aaron Rodgers. Number one, it's the feel and the rhythm of the offense. Number two is the question of, is he throwing to open guys or not? And, and I think it's generally accepted that he doesn't. Um, I just saw in the Facebook group, somebody had mentioned something to the effect of, well, that's because he doesn't trust his receivers. Listen, maybe um, there's been a lot of talk about that. I don't know. But if I'm the head coach, if I'm the GM, I don't care. If there's an open guy, I'm talking wide open, and you're saying, oh, I just don't trust him, get off my team. That's ridiculous, right? That that's it doesn't even make sense. And I would guess if you ask, I mean, I'm I'm not criticized. It makes sense, but come on, man, come on. I mean, if it was a little bit tight, maybe you're worried that he's not going to make the play. But let's let's take a look at what wide open looks like. So this right off the bat, first of all, it looks like a play where it's hard to get the ball out quick because you got three guys running down the field that are running kind of far down the field. You don't have that quick little play. However, as we run this out. Pretty simple, right? He, you know, you fake the handoff, you pull up these guys, 
And now he's trying to see where am I going? Where am I going? Where am I going? He's looking, he's looking, he's looking. Nobody's open, nobody's open, nobody's open. So what you do, you give it to this guy, Aaron Jones. He's not going to get much. You dump it to him. He's going to run it out to about here. He gets maybe six yards. I don't know. But Aaron Rodgers, look, he's got his arm cocked. And this is part of the problem. There's a timing thing. There's all this. If he just if he just acknowledges nothing, dump it, we're good. No, we're not restarting now. Stop. Get out of my face. I hate doing those because then my computer gets locked up for a week. I'm not doing any updates. Get out of my face. He should have just said, this isn't working. Go here. Or just man up and do it. But he's kind of halfway between, uh, and maybe this is the trust issue, right? Uh, maybe, I don't know. Uh, and so then you got this guy. So rather than, and look, he kind of looks this way, but he's, I don't think there's time. There's a lot of indecision, right? If you're going to cock your arm, throw it. You could have thrown it, by the way. You could have given it to him. He decides not to. Why? So then he looks this way and he wants it. He can get the ball off, but he's like, eh, I don't know. There's a guy and I'm scared and this guy's coming and I, I'm just going to run. Could have thrown it here. He could have thrown it here. Now he could easily throw it here, right? And I know it's, it's a matter of where his eyes are. You're telling me you can't get it to this guy? So he was open. He was open. This is about as wide open as it gets. And now he's open. Now Maybe this guy's in the way. I can't really see from his vantage point. But he's open. He's open. You got two guys. Give it to someone. What does he do? He runs out of bounds. This is kind of the problem. Come on, man. And again, this is this is the best offensive performance the Green Bay Packers had all year. But this is kind of the problem. There's... Everything revolves around a rhythm and a timing, and everything about the timing is just kind of messed up. Granted, there was some pressure there, so maybe that's part of the problem. But again, get the ball out of your hand. Don't halfway make a decision. Don't cock your arm like you're going to throw it. By the way, right at about the time you're supposed to be dumping it off to the running back, by the time he slips out, that's the time when you've made your decision in your mind. I'm not going to him. I'm not going to him. I'm not going to him. Forget it. I'm dumping it off. That's what you need to do. If it's not there, by the time Jones slips out, you look his way and you give it to him. He could have gotten more yards than Aaron Rodgers got here. And we could have got this thing going a little bit quicker instead of this clunky, sloppy looking thing. And by the way, every time a game starts like this, every single Packer fan who's been hyped up all week, who's been listening to the podcast, getting jacked up about how we're going to annihilate the Raiders. You watch this play and go, oh, here we go. Here we go again. We're actually going to lose to the Raiders again. I can't believe they're going to do this. This is a nightmare. This is horrible. But it was unnecessary. He had three different receipts. He had four. Aaron Jones, two guys across the middle, and Kumaro came open at the end. Four guys. He decided to just take it himself and run it. Again, this may very well be a trust thing. Kumaro, you know, I don't know. He was This guy was barely open. I don't know. He must have just not seen the guy wide open in the middle of the field. And then Aaron Jones, he saw and just thought maybe the guy was going to bat the ball down. I don't want to risk it. But again, that's more of a timing thing. He should have been over there. But the reason he didn't look over there and dump it is because he's halfway thinking, I think I'm going to do it, cocks his arm, and just says, eh, no, never mind. So that's what needs to get cleaned up. This is all about timing. This is all about rhythm. You can't be making half decisions. It's either there and you, boom, make the decision, or it's not and you go somewhere else. He's got to make quicker decisions than that. And again, when we get over to Aaron uh, Jordan Love, that's what you're going to see. It's just, if I see it, I throw it. And that's part of his downfall, by the way. I shouldn't be jumping there already. This isn't like a podcast. <laughs> but part of the reason, it, it's not an issue with accuracy with Jordan Love. It's not like he throws bad throws, and that's why he has so many interceptions. It's the fact that he sees it, he throws it, and he probably should have taken a half a second more to realize there's a defender squatting there. But he doesn't. He just, if I see it, I go, and that's it. Here's the very next play, and it kind of epitomizes a little more. Like I said, the last play, everybody's kind of stretching the field. It's a little bit less of what you expect to see out of a Matt LaFleur offense. This is very much what you expect to see. Quick, short, little routes. It's a slant route. It's a, you know, going into the flat, going into the flat. All real quick routes. Come on now, dummy. So right off the bat, open, open. He's coming open here, kind of. And this is this is a trust thing. He's he's trusting that he's going to get his speed and he's going to come across. And also, by the way, I think this is a characteristic of Aaron Rodgers. He hates this. He hates this. He always hates these. And he says, I don't need that. We can get more yards. He wants to get to here. So these are the guys he's looking at here. Obviously, this is nothing. This is nothing. But MVS does get inside. And he says, I can hit that. 
but he doesn't. And if you look at it, and you can blame MVS or blame whoever you want to blame, it was a little bit too far. And if you look at the other angle, which we're not going to, that is the issue. And maybe it is an issue with MVS because the timing was always off. So, it, But the, the bottom line is it doesn't matter. And you can't really blame him because MVS did win. That's probably the better thing to throw. You throw to him if he's got it. And he says, well, he got him beat, so I'm going to throw it. But again, what you'd like to see at some point, even if it's not this play, this guy's open, this guy. Either These are quick, easy yards, especially like on first down. You get plays like this where you get this much. Because, look, you got this linebacker trying to come across to get ju- – and, and Man, Aaron Jones, we saw how successful he was through the air, and I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of this. There's a lot of speculation that maybe Aaron Jones is going to be used a little bit more like Alvin Kamara, while A.J. Dillon is going to be just the, the you know, 18, 20 carry a game, just banger. And it's going to make sense because although he doesn't have blazing speed, this is what he can do. He's going to get out here so that this guy, there's no way. This isn't going to work. He's carrying him, carrying this corner this way. So it's 1v1, right? It's Aaron Jones' verse. Just dump it, man. And again, it doesn't look like much. And it's I think Aaron jo- Aaron Rodgers just despises these kinds of plays. But Aaron Jones is going to curve this out and get to probably about here. Now, that doesn't compete with this, where if he hits it, poss- I mean, he could go. He's got the speed. It gets him all excited. You know, but then he doesn't put the ball in the right spot. So, again, I'm not super mad. The only thing is, at some point, these are the plays that the defense has given you. Just take it. Just take it. You can take these and just eat up a defense all day long, these quick little passes. Then eventually you're going to force the defense to adjust because they can't just let you have these all day long. Aaron Rodgers hates throwing those. He hates it. So I I really don't want this to be just a a bash Aaron Rodgers thing, but it's just kind of a question because this is a great play, and it's a big play. So it's one of those where Aaron Rodgers holding on a little bit longer um, kind of worked to his benefit, but let's just run this out for a second. So it's third and six now. And the reason it's third and six is because Aaron Rodgers refused to throw the ball on the first play. And then he threw it to somebody and missed him on the second play. So indecision and then a bad throw. And now it's third and six. So here we go. Now we got to pick up six more yards. So here is probably what, and, and it's not a great play and you, you probably don't want to look here and Aaron Rodgers will never look here, but this is one of those where, Maybe a more inexperienced, scared quarterback is like, ah, I'm just going to take it because it's there. Rodgers doesn't want to. Here's, here's the question I have, though, because, again, he's going to stop short, but you don't want that because he's going to get smoked. you got to look a little bit further down the field. Here's the thing, though. Jimmy Graham right here is going to come open over this way. Look how long it takes Aaron Rodgers to figure out that he's wide open. I counted three seconds. He's open. Now he throws it. I mean, I you know, there's a lot to do. There's a lot to figure out, but it just it just seems weird to me. You know where everybody's going to be, and you're watching the defense. And I can see him scanning. He's looking now to his right. What is he looking at? Is he trying to? Is he just looking at Kumaro? Maybe he does. He just doesn't see him. He looks to his right, eh, eh, and now he sees him. I mean, again, it's it's a great play, and he's also got this guy who's wide open here. So this, this is kind of a situation – I mean, it, it's not like the play broke down. I think this is a matter of he finished his route and then he came open. Um, but, I mean, this, this is a broken play, and it took Aaron Rodgers about five seconds to find his guy. I mean, in total, from the time of the snap. Let's just see. Snap, one, two, three, four, yeah, four-ish seconds to get the ball out of his hand, and Jimmy Graham came open after probably, what, two seconds? So. Again, I'm not trying to overly critique Aaron Rodgers. It's just it's one of those things where it doesn't feel smooth. Like that was a situation where the play worked. The the defense completely broke down. The play worked. And Aaron Rodgers is looking at covered guys and just doesn't see Jimmy. Right. And then he's got he's got another guy that's wide open over this way that also could have been a big play. It was to the point where Jimmy was open here. He ran all the way over here. He started slowing down here. And then he ends up catching it over here. I don't want to complain about good plays, but why did it take that long to see the guy just coming open down the middle of the field, especially for a very cerebral quarterback that understands the D de- you should see what the defense is doing, know where your guys are and say, Hey, there's going to be an open spot over there for Jimmy. He didn't see it. Even when he looked to his right, he didn't see him there at first. It took him another tick or another second for him to go through his progressions and go, Oh, look at that. There's nobody over there. It's just, it's just weird to me because again, I'm just comparing what I think of Aaron Rodgers, all the stuff I think about him, right? 
incredible arm, very accurate, brilliant, genius, all this stuff. And then you put it in this context and say, they don't exactly fit together nicely. This genius with a great arm who sees all this stuff, who knows all this stuff. It, it just, you know what I mean? Like it's kind of round peg square hole. It doesn't quite fit. So again, it, it's got to get cleaned up. That's all there is to it. As a side note, if I may elaborate a little bit on that last play, um, because I'm sure some people are mad that I'm mad at that play. The only reason it worked is because the offensive line blocked longer than they're expected to. If you don't have the ball out in three seconds, you're in trouble. The fact of the matter is, I believe within that three-second window, he could have gotten it to Jimmy Graham. If there was a if there was a guy bringing pressure, like on that first down play, he doesn't get the ball to Jimmy. Or maybe he does, he scrambles, and he still gets the ball to Jimmy. I don't know, but the, the bottom line is, the play worked. The design worked. It took him five seconds to get the ball out of his hand. No play design takes five seconds. Zero. They're all designed to be out in about two and a half to three seconds. Be, be under three seconds. If you get to three seconds, you've waited too long. That that just, that play was a broken play, and it didn't need to be a broken play because the play worked. So that's, that's again, that's my issue. But again, th- th- this, is, uh, this is a great play. Here, here's my thought, though. So this is a touchdown pass to Aaron Jones. Spoiler alert. Just kind of let it run out here. And I just feel like this is the difference between Aaron Rodgers and a lot of other quarterbacks. And it's the reason why at times like this, Aaron Rodgers is a better quarterback than every other quarterback, right? So he's going to look at this. He's kind of flat. He he knows he's going to run past him. He also knows that Lazard is running this way. So this guy's not going to be there. There's going to be an open area here. He's running too fast. I can get the ball there. Sure enough, puts it up right as he gets past him. Touchdown pass to Aaron Jones. There's no problem with that whatsoever. My thought is, and, and again, this is where Aaron Rodgers would be better than a Jordan Love. I think Jordan Love takes the easy throw because, again, the design of this, look at that. I mean, that's that's just a beautiful, easy pass. Not going to get as many yards, but this is kind of the, this is where on every play you're going to have a guy just like this, right? And I think this is somebody made a mistake here. But the point is you're always going to have these guys, somebody's going to be open, get the ball to the open guy, take the five yards, take the six yards, and keep chunking your way down the field. Aaron Rodgers is always looking for this. And the fact of the matter is, if if this doesn't pan out, what happens? He's keying in here. Again, this is the issue. He's keying in. This is the guy I want. He's staring at him, staring at him, staring at him, and he decides to throw. So he decided very early, this is where I'm going. What if something happens? If he trips, if the guy stays with him, if whatever. This The, the point is, we know what happens because we see it all the time. If it doesn't work, he doesn't throw it. And then he starts dancing because these guys are putting a lot of pressure and then he ends up scrambling. Then nobody's open. He runs out of bounds. So again, I'm not trying to complain about great plays. This is where it works. The problem is it works once every, what, five, six, seven, eight plays. And I think Matt LaFleur just doesn't want that. So they're, they're, ideally you find a balance, right? And I don't know if there can be a balance. And that's kind of the problem. Because if you decide to take the easy shot, you're not going to take this shot. I don't know how you strike a balance. So you're, you're going to lose these plays, but you're going to stop with those constant, you know, my guy's not there. I don't know what to do. Scrambling, running out of bounds, that kind of nonsense. So again, the, the, this probably isn't the greatest example because that's fine. You know, if you have an intelligent quarterback, as we said, who sees something, this guy should be able to be man on man against this guy. He should be able to run past him because of he's too, you know, linebackers way too slow. So, boom, I got him, right? Again, not trying to critique it. This is a situation in which Aaron Rodgers is a better quarterback than a guy, I'm assuming, like Jordan Love. Not saying he Jordan Love doesn't have the intelligence to figure that out, but this is, this is where he's diagnosing pre-snap that it should be there. But, again, the issue is what if it isn't? That's sort of the issue. Um, but in this case, it was, and it's because he's able to diagnose beforehand. He knows he's going to be manned up on a linebacker. He's going to be able to run past him, touchdown pass. And because it's touchdown, remember, this happened last time. Aaron Jones was manned up against this guy. He was open. He could have ran right past him. He didn't throw it. Why? Because Aaron Jones went in the flat, and that's boring. This time, if he runs past him, it's a touchdown. Now I like him as my primary read, right? So, again, sometimes it works to your advantage. Sometimes it's an absolute nightmare. Either way, it's not exactly what Matt LaFleur is not saying that he didn't want this. Of course, that's part of the reason he ran this route. Just a feel, right? Just get getting a feel for what Aaron Rodgers likes to do with this offense. 
So this right here is exactly it. This is where Aaron Rodgers is just doing the quick and easy thing exactly as he's supposed to. And and make no mistake, the lack of talent at wide receiver and everything else is an issue. And and the benefit of, of getting more talent around here is that you have more options. And when you have, for example, this many receiving options, you got one, he's going to run out. So that's two, three, four, five guys. And you're trying to go through progressions. And one of these five guys is going to get open. That's when you run into issues where it's like, okay, it's going to take them a while to find that one guy. Whereas if you have a bunch of good wide receivers, whoever you're keying in on, there's a good chance he's open. But this is a situation where a guy's going to run a quick little route. It's designed to get this guy open. He's going to get open. He's just going to throw it to him. Why does it keep doing that? This is what the offense is going to look like if it does what Matt LaFleur wants it to do. Watch Aaron Jones. Boop. Look at that. And again, what did he get? Seven? That's a quick, easy little seven. And again, he's just manned up against this linebacker. So he knows based on, and, and Matt LaFleur knows. So Matt LaFleur, this, and this is where a, a good cerebral quarterback, coach, whatever, working together, understand this. It's not just about the routes and everything else and progressions. It's actually about the play call and understanding what the coach is trying to tell you something specific when he calls in a play. It's not just here's a like in Madden where I just pick a play and it's like, I don't know, I like this play and we'll see what happens and I'm trying to find the guy that's open. No, 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 no. By by having him do this and this guy do this and da 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 he's in his mind saying, okay, so he's going to be here, he's going to be here, he's going to be here, which leaves this guy to man-on-man man Aaron Jones, right? He just, he's by process of elimination, by deduction, this is probably what's going to happen. It doesn't have to be, but we figure out that they're in man. We figure out this and this, and I watch the safety and all that. It has to be mano y mano. And I saw last time on that play that I decided not to throw to him, he's too fast. So on that touchdown pass, he's too fast. If it is man coverage and he slips out here and runs out this way, he's going to be open and I'm just going to give it to him. And that's all he wants. That's all Matt LaFleur wants. And Aaron Rodgers says, you know what? Let's just do it again. It's the right decision. He decides, you know, he's looking this way. I'm guessing he's deciding to go this way all along. And maybe it's just because, again, similar with the trust thing, he knows that this is just a winning option all the time. So now he's just like, well, I'm just going to kill you. If you guys keep doing this, I'm just going to bury you. Me and Aaron are just going to kill you. So he kind of keeps his eyes this way. And then at the right time, right as he's coming out of his break, he looks and throws. He kind of knew that all along. And again, he's just picking on this guy. Aaron Jones is too talented for this. So again, for whatever reason, he really likes it. Maybe it's, you know, rather than trusting the scheme, he's just trusting Aaron to beat this guy every time. Either way, this is kind of what it's supposed to look like. And again, possibly a look into the future of what we could be be seeing a little bit more of. I don't think Aaron Jones is Alvin Kamara, but he, he is a very good player when you get him on an, a linebacker, which is why teams need linebackers that can that can cover. Because you get a guy like Aaron Jones, Alvin Kamara, whatever, they're just going to pick on you. They're just going to keep picking on you. This is This is like four plays in a row where this guy's been manned up on a linebacker and they just keep picking on him. Not that he's thrown it every time. And that, that the throw wasn't even that great. If he throws it out in front of him, he can carry it out as opposed to making him do a, a 360, which by the way, Jordan Love is very good at that, putting it in the right spot, throw it out here. He can catch it in stride. He might be able to get a first down. He's got to stop turn and then he's getting caught. So this is seven yards. That could have been possibly like 11 yards if Aaron Rodgers threw a better ball, but um, either way, he stays within rhythm. He stays within the scheme of it. He, you know, keys his eyes to the left right as that, you know, again, timing right as he's coming out of his break, he turns his head and throws just that's, that's it. That right there epitomizes what Matt LaFleur would like to do going forward. Not that there's never going to be big plays or anything like that. We've already seen plays where guys go a little bit deeper down the field and all that, but this is the general rhythm and flow of what we are supposed to be seeing much more often. And again, when we get over to Jordan Love, you'll see what it's actually supposed to look like. The only reason I want to highlight this is this is a run play here. Um, and this is, again, this is the benefit. It's second and three now. Now, they've been doing great on that last drive, but they didn't do themselves any favors. It looked clunky. It didn't really work. Fortunately, we got that big play to Jimmy. Then we got a touchdown pass right after it. So we made it work, but the whole thing looked clunky. The point is, though, when you dump it off, you put yourself in second and three. Every team wants to be in second and three. The, the thing I want to highlight here, though, on this run play, if you would stop doing that, this is a situation where I believe Aaron Jones would be subbed out for A.J. Dillon. So Aaron Jones, great back. He can handle second and three as good as anybody. Maybe in certain situations you'd rather have him than Dillon, but that's always hindsight, right? Aaron Jones finds a seam and he carries it to the house um, where A.J. Dillon probably couldn't do that. But 
this is a situation where A.J. Dillon probably would be a benefit. So this is just a very simple toss out. The difference is, watch this. See that guy? I don't believe he's going to get a first down here. He gets to just before this line, which is just before here. It's going to be close, but the point is, this is where a little bit more power, and A.J. Dillon doesn't run with quite as much power as you'd think for his size. On occasion, I think he needs to work on pad level, all that stuff. I've talked about that. The video is available if you want to go find it. Here's the thing, though. The guy that tackles him is this guy. He's being blocked. Not blocked very well. It looks like that's Kumaro. But the point is, he's essentially just going to stick an arm out and kind of wrap him up from the side. I, I have no problems with Aaron Jones. Not complaining about Aaron Jones. But this is a situation where I, I, I have a hard time believing 250-pound A.J. Dillon lowering his shoulders isn't going to run right through an arm tackle. He's going to blow through this like it's nothing. Look at that. See, he's getting him from the side. Now, there's going to be some contact, but I just – Aaron Jones is a smaller guy. And this is a big man. I don't know who that is, but he's big. So when he hits him, even from the side, it, momentum stops. That's not going to happen to A.J. Dillon. Even if he's running with bad pad level and doesn't have full force, basic physics at 250 pounds, he's going to get that extra inch. So again, what, what, why A.J. Dillon? Th that's why. What we see from Aaron Jones on this, this aerial assault, that's going to be all Aaron Jones. And it's not that Aaron Jones won't, won't occasionally run it because, again, we want to kind of confuse and distract. And the good thing is, He's a great running back. So when you think he's out there just to catch passes and all of a sudden he runs and you're off balance because you don't expect it because you got four guys split out and you're thinking it's going to be a, a passing play and, and you got Aaron Jones running, who's already an incredible running back, that's going to be awesome. But then you sub in Aaron or A.J. Dillon for the – I mean, it's just I'm, – I'm excited about it. I'm very excited about that. Um, and again, you know – AJ and, and and the exact same thing is true with AJ Dillon. When he goes in, you think, well, this is going to be a run play. On this play, let's back it up here. You put AJ Dillon in here, and then you figure you've got um, maybe Jace and Deguara with Devonte and uh, Funchess. This could easily be a passing play with AJ Dillon slipping out because although that's not his main forte, he's able to do it. And when you just need a couple yards, if he slides out here and he's got a little bit of room, it's the exact same situation. You can dump it off to him, and he'll be able to power his way for those extra couple yards. Although, Devontae, very good option. Funchess, not my favorite wide receiver in the world, but he's a pretty big option on these short yardage plays. And then, of course, the two tight ends with Jace and Deguara. And again, if you got linebackers like this trying to stop Jace and Deguara, you're in a little bit of trouble. And again, a lot of times what they're going to do is they're just going to have him slip out real quick, especially when you think it's a run play. You got a big guy here, and so he's going to come crashing down for one second, and then he's going to slip out this way. You see what I'm saying? Like, th this is this is the great thing about it. You bring out the beef. Everybody th everybody comes up. They think it's a run play. You got these tight ends that can block. It's not their main thing, but if, they, if you block for a second and then slip out, this guy isn't going to catch him. That's an easy, what is that, eight yards? So, you know, again, it, it's not just about the guys that we drafted very much have to do, and when you actually get in here and see the nuance of it and say, okay, let's replace these guys with the guys that we now have, you can kind of start to see the difference. Instead of Kumaro, you've got Funches. Uh, I don't even know. Is, I don't think that's Devontae, but we should put Devontae out there. And then you get, instead of Jimmy, you put um, uh, Jace here. And then on this side, you're going to put Deguara. I think that's actually Bakhtiari, so you're not going to put Deguara. But this would be technically Deguara, I guess. Um, and then this is going to be A.J. Dillon. And again, Jace can come down and block and come out here. You can have him do the exact same thing. If it, you know Bakhtiari kind of stays inside, lets him get to this side, kind of half blocks. Deguara comes over here, chips him, and then takes off. I mean, it's just, there's a lot of really good options here. So again, that's why I wanted to highlight this play. Just sub out a couple of the guys with the new guys that we have, and it's kind of exciting. And again, I think just putting AJ Dillon in on this play is a first down. And they did actually give him a first down on that, so props. But either way, A.J. Dillon is a better option in that situation. All right, here again is a great this, – this, this is all scheme, right? This is just we drew it up to do a certain thing. That certain thing worked. Aaron Rodgers recognizes what the thing is supposed to do, sees it, throws it. Beautiful play. Again, remember, instead of Danny Vitale sitting here, this is going to be uh, Josiah DeGuara. Very simple. Look, ah, come on. Drives me insane. The point is, it's developed to look like a run play. 
That's what everything is built off of. Look, he's going to hand it, fake hand it off. They're all coming up. See, the, the timing doesn't really work. So he's supposed to pretend like he's blocking. He's going to slip out. And look, he's wide open. So again, Josiah DeGuara is here. This is one of the few times that he actually gets the ball to Danny Vitale. I don't really know speed-wise if DeGuara does anything special or better aside from not slipping at the end, but he still goes down roughly the same way. But again, this is just this is just scheme, just doing its thing. These guys are going to come up because it looks like a run. Look, everybody's up. Look, I mean, look at this. On a pass play, everybody is within what? One, two, three, four-ish yards. Everybody's up here. You got one safety. He doesn't stand a chance, man. And then again, you got these guys who aren't all that fast. You got him slipping out. He's freaking out like, oh, no, we got all this open space. I better catch up. And they're kind of freaking out like this guy's going to be the guy. No, but he's looking here. Linebackers, they don't know what to do. They just found out it's a pass play. They're just starting to backpedal. They're looking at each other like, what do we do? And then finally, when he sees it, it's way too late. This is the point, right? It's not Mike McCarthy brute force. We're just going to be better, faster, better route runners. You just run down the field, cut in, and when you cut, you get away from them. You run past them, we'll throw it to you. This is this is all cerebral, right? They're all confused. These guys are confused. They don't know what to do. They just found out it's a pass play. They're freaking out. Go get him quick. He's standing there by himself. Look around. Oh, no, here's a guy. Oh, shoot, here's a guy. And it's a real simple thing. If you look at it, like, there's not that much here. There's not that many guys running routes. There's really just two guys. Both of them are kind of basically open. I don't know if you want to throw this, but if he'd have cut this way, he would have been wide open. But either way, again, that's the point. Matt LaFleur is trying to outthink everybody. Aaron Rodgers is trying to outthrow everybody. And I think he's got to get away from that and trust the scheme. And sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes he does have to make plays because the play breaks down. But I think he needs to kind of trust it more. And um, again, it's it's not very often that you're going to see that wide open, although we've seen it twice now where he's just way out thinking Gruden's uh, defense here. Um, but that, that the other reason that why this one is so smooth is unlike the Jimmy Graham big play, he, saw, he, he identified it right away. He knew that if everything kind of plays out the way that I think it's going to play out, he could see they were not in man coverage, so nobody's going to be manned up on him. It's just a matter of are they going to recognize him slipping out? Nobody saw it. He's wide open. He threw it right away. So Aaron Rodgers identified all this stuff, knew what was coming. He didn't see the Jimmy thing. And, and by the way, the, the, again, Jimmy Graham throw about, what, four seconds, five seconds to get the ball out. This was instantaneous. This was in rhythm. This is beautiful. This is what the 2020 Green Bay Packers need to look like. And again, just sub out Vitaly for uh, Josiah DeGuara, and you got your 2020 Green Bay Packer offense there. Very smart, very cerebral. I actually want to highlight this um, angle because this is this is fun because you can see the chaos a little more. From from the angle we looked at before, it's like, come on, dummies, how do you not see? You can kind of see the mess and the confusion and just how quickly things happen and how easily you can be confused. It's 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 just it's organized chaos, is what it is. And by the way, that's exactly how the Packers got beat by the 49ers and by the Eagles. It's organized chaos. Whereas we create chaos but we're thriving in it. We know exactly what's going on and you don't. You're just living in chaos trying to improvise as we go along. This is a cerebral game and that's how the Packers defense is going to get better. They're very talented football players. It's just the mental processing part of it that needs to get better. And that's what they're picking on the Raiders for. These guys are just, they're not up to speed. They can't keep up with Matt LaFleur right now. But here is (laughs) my favorite thing. Here we go. So right away again, it's, it's nobody followed him. It's not man coverage. It's zone coverage. So he's going to cut, cut across. And then we're going to, and again, this is part of what confuses people. You could give the ball here. So number 50 is seeing him come across. He's got to kind of, he's, he's watch, he's got to scoot, right? Everybody's got to watch out for this guy. Cause even if they don't hand it to him and you can see his hands are kind of bunched up as though maybe it came to me because Aaron Rodgers, And again, maybe it's a little bit of a timing thing, but when he turns his back, could be here, could be here, could be here. It's like, where's the ball going to go? Nobody knows. So 50's got to go this way, and he can't let up even when he sees he doesn't have the ball because they might still throw it to him because that's another way to do this. Again, you can do so many things from this. Hand it to him, hand it to him, hand it to him, throw to him, throw to him, throw to him, and there could be guys down here also. There's a million things you can do with this exact same play, and so they know they they got to carry him out this way. So again, organized chaos. He's coming up because it's a run play. He's thinking he's going to get blocked here. He's got to try to get this guy blocked up, stuff this up. These two guys got to work together to bring down Aaron Jones. That's the plan. And it probably works if this is all it is because he's got a huge gap. One of them takes on the blocker. One of them gets down Aaron Jones. If they're somewhat competent, they should figure it out. 
he realizes he doesn't have it. He's kind of going to take on the block and he misses and he looks and he's like, oh, shoot, now what do I do? Go get the quarterback. That's all I can really figure out what to do. So he's going to go for it. He's saying, hey, dummy, go over there. He's open while he's trying to keep his eye on Aaron Rodgers. The whole thing just breaks down. We'll do it in, in live time just to show all that. But again, organized chaos. There's so many things the defense has to process. And even as they're trying their best, look at that. It just And it's so quick. It happens so fast. And it's just a momentary lapse of thinking. And, and this guy's wide open down the field. Easy completion. And again, you can do, you can run, he, Malifleur can run that exact same play up until right, see how good my pausing skills are, right here. You can run this every single play for an entire game and run 15 different plays off of it. You can have these guys running different routes. You can have these guys running different routes. And again, you can hand it to any of these three guys and have them go any which direction. You can have an entire offense off of just this. And that's the point of the Kyle Shanahan offense. This is the structure. We start from here and we build off of it. We run this play or something similar. Other run, every single play is a run play. Essentially, every single play looks like a run play to start. And then it's a matter of what are we actually doing? And Aaron Rodgers is going to turn his back. And this is where everybody says, okay, who's coming out with the, right? It's, it's, it's the ball under the cup thing. Where's the ball? I don't know. By the time Aaron Rodgers turns around, we, we, you're kind of looking as guys peek out. Okay, does he have the ball? He doesn't have the ball. So I'm going to get past him. Does he have the ball? He doesn't have the ball. Who has the ball? Where's the ball? He's still got the ball. Quick, go that way. Uh, 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 uh. Done. I just, it's, and that's the thing. It's, everybody loves the old school Packers, and we love old school Packers, that aerial assault attacking people. We need to start appreciating the beauty of this and how great it is and just being smarter than everybody. Rather than, and, and by the way, there is going to be a big element of being stronger than everybody when we build up this offensive line and get A.J. Dillon involved. There's going to be a lot of, we're also bigger and stronger than you, but the but at the at the crux of it, we're, we're just smarter than you. And, and that those two things are going to come together. And it's going to, you talk about insult to injury. It's like, you know, you win the spelling bee and then you walk over to the second place guy and you just break his nose. Like, it's just, that's the Green Bay Packers. We're smarter than you and I broke your nose. So there you go. And I, I, I haven't gone through that. I didn't do a once through, but one of the things that's already clicking is that the rhythm is starting to, to, to catch on. The first series was clunky. It worked, but it was clunky. Now the second series, it's just, and again, they're not moving. Look how f they're not moving very far, right? But it's working and you can just feel that rhythm. And we felt it when we watched the game. You just know when a team is in rhythm and everything's kind of working, they need more of this. And, 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 and again, the question is, can Aaron Rodgers work in the system? He's doing it right now. It can work. You just got to get into that rhythm. And maybe that's Matt LaFleur trying to do a better job of calling the right plays at the right time and, and manipulating the right guys, right? They're really picking on the linebackers here. Every single big play has been picking on the linebackers. Whatever it takes, find that thing. And 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 that's where you bring in a Dylan and a DeGuara because it gives you more pe these aren't we don't view them as weapons, but they are. They're weapons in a Matt LaFleur arsenal. Because they're different pieces that can pick on different guys, right? If this isn't working, let's try picking on that guy. Let's try picking on this. Let's try doing these extra things that is going to slip through the cracks. And now we got a couple extra pieces in the arsenal that can do different things and broaden that playbook a little bit so that we can do more stuff so that we can pick on more guys to help us get into a better rhythm. So again, you can feel we're just getting started. And I'm not going to go through this whole game. Um, and I, again, the, the intention of this was to show what this offense looks like as opposed to what it's supposed to look like. And that's been a failure so far because outside of that first drive, um, this has looked like exactly a Matt LaFleur uh, style offense. But again, that first series was a pretty good example. But let's do a, a little bit longer here. So here is actually the very next passing play. And you can see the dysfunction. And, and the, the weird thing about it is Aaron Rodgers is going through his progressions and I feel like he's going the wrong way. And I, I'm sure this is how Matt LaFleur drew it up, but it's kind of weird because he's going to have a guy wide open right at the beginning of the play, and he's not looking that way. So if we run, I think it's Geronimo here. Watch. Boom. Hit him. Hit. Come on, genius. If you look at where his head is pointed, he's looking this way. Well, no, he's not. See, he's not, though. I don't get that. He is starting looking this direction. And then he turns his head this way. Right as he's coming out of his break, he turns. I don't understand it. Look, 
Where's his head? Right here. It's almost like he's it's taking too long, like, you know, eh, well, whatever. It's not quite there yet, although you should be able to see if he's going to do this, he's going to be open. Stay on him. Instead, he turns this way, hoping that there's going to be something there. And look, again, this this is another situation. I don't know what's going on in Aaron Rodgers' head. I'm just trying to figure it out because, again, a very cerebral quarterback sees this and knows what the route is. Just just throw it. He's going to be open. But I'm guessing he he wants the bigger play. He's going to look this way, and now he's looking this way, hoping, right, I bet he's going to be able to beat this guy. But he's getting grabbed. He's getting all this stuff, and it's not there. And now he's like, okay, shoot, let's let's kind of go back and look at this guy. Well, that's, I mean, maybe if he was cutting across this way, but look, he kind of goes up, so that's not really there. And now he finally throws it this way, the only part of his entire route in which he's covered when Geronimo starts to cut it up. And it becomes a big play, and that probably could have been caught, you know, a little bit of a back shoulder thing. But again, it's just there's no rhythm, there's no nothing. And again, the the, the correct read is right here, which is where he's looking first. He's looking this. I don't know. Maybe he's looking here. I don't know. But look at this. Throw it to him. Even if he gets smoked right here, that's six yards. He he doesn't throw it until he turns. And maybe that's the point. Maybe the the full route is to do this and then cut it up. So that's that's probably the but again that's sort of the issue that I have with the whole thing. If this is the route, it's it's done. I guess you know you're pulling him up, you're clearing out this way. So he spoke, and that would be I guess technically an issue with Geronimo, and and you could make a case for why you need better receivers because Geronimo's let's just call it what it is. He's slow. So if he, if it's if you draw this up so it's man on man here, and right you clear it out here, he's gonna stick here. And you you've baited him down, which worked, right? He's gonna he's gonna crash hard on Geronimo, who's cutting out. So now we're, I'm gonna switch my argument to this is why you can make look. He's crashing. So as he's crashing now, his momentum is going this way. You carry it up this way, but look how just slowly. I mean, the the corner just barely barely lazily turns his body, and he, he's just it's good to go. So Rogers is like, well, it's my last shot. I can't throw it out in front of him. I'm going to throw him a little back shoulder, and he doesn't catch it. So, okay, if I again, I still would rather just just throw this. That's easy, but you know, whatever. Anyway, so yeah, there's. I guess technically, there's nothing there. He probably could have thrown to who is that? Kumaro? I don't see the hair. So maybe I, you know, again, th- there's not that much there. So that wasn't as good of an example as I was hoping, because I guess that is the route, and he should have caught the back shoulder. So we'll say that this is an argument for we need better wide receivers, because that was just garbage. And now the problem is it's third and ten, and the issue is you can't do that sort of a style of offense, right? The the quick short little passes when it's third and ten, because the defense is saying go ahead. They're going to drop back to the to the ten yard line. They're going to just beat tackle anything that comes in here. So you can slip whoever you want out here, throw him the ball. He's not going to make it the ten yards. So now you have to run um, what I'm calling now the Mike McCarthy offense, which is just to send everybody down the field. And then there, so they're going to stand back here. They're going to say, "Okay, send everybody. We'll be waiting." And these guys are just going to pin their ear, ears back and go get Aaron Rodgers. It's not going to work because everybody knows it, and and the Packers can't even be cute about it because the defense knows exactly what they're doing. The Packers know they know what they're doing. And this just comes down to, I need these guys to beat these guys. And it's not going to happen because the pressure is going to get there. And as you watch, it's just, everybody's just covered down the field. Nobody's confused about it. This is why you don't want a third and 10. There's no amount of deceit that you can pull here. Right. I mean, it's just everybody's covered. Here's the marker right here. The defenders are standing there. He's just got him completely blocked up. He's covering him. Pressure's going to start to close down. Nothing, nothing. He kind of maybe thinks he's open, but not really. There's nothing here. Rogers has nowhere to go. This is nothing. I mean, maybe, maybe, actually, not even maybe. That He should have thrown it to him, <laughs> but he doesn't. I mean, it, it, look, it, this is, first of all, why you don't like third and 10. This is why you like getting those quick little dump off passes. This is why I wish you would have just thrown it to Geronimo, even though that wasn't the play. But you could also say this is maybe a little bit of indecision. I don't know where he's looking. It's hard to tell where his eyes are. If he's looking here, he's not going to see here. But he's got time. He's actually set his feet. It looks like he's about to throw it. Maybe, again, maybe he's just not looking. But, I mean, this is this is a completion. So I don't know. I don't know. If you if you want to call that on Rodgers, go ahead. I'm I, I can't really be mad at Rodgers because this is just a nightmare. 
And this is why nobody wants to be in third and 10. It's not that you can't convert a third and 10. It's just the defense now has the advantage. All right. Whereas on every other offensive play, the offense has the advantage because we can do a million different things and you have no idea. And if you call the wrong play at the wrong time, we're just going to destroy you. And they've been doing that all along. Third and 10, the defense is now in control. The defense says, I know exactly what you're going to do. And we're going to be waiting for it. And by the way, you can count on us coming heavy. And there's nothing you can do about that. So the defense now has the advantage in third and 10. And you can just, everything about it, you can tell the offense is now in trouble. Sorry, kid game that came downstairs. But just just chaos. Let me actually back that up a little bit. I want to kind of see if we can. Aaron Rodgers at the very end here. Because right here is where we wanted him to throw it. Right? Just. But and that and we see that a lot. I, I swear he's looking at him, but it, it's just there's this there's something blocking him in his mind from throwing it. I mean, we know he's very cautious about about interceptions, and maybe that's the issue. He sees the open guy and he starts looking around, like, okay, if I throw it, where do I throw it? And 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 by the time he actually decides, I don't think a defender can get there. It's obviously too late, and he needs to protect the ball. Whereas again, I think other quarterbacks maybe a little bit quicker on the draw, who are a little less afraid of throwing interceptions, take a chance there. I mean, it's a good thing that Aaron Rodgers has so few interceptions, but it's been a theory for a while now that a lot of the problems here, and again, this play is a disaster, but I think there was a play there after it broke down. He decided not to throw it. You can just feel the hesitation in him. Again, he kind of bows his elbow, elbow back like he's about to throw, and there's just for a second right here, or... Yeah, it was it, that was it, and I know there's really not much time, but it's it's just it's a it's a fraction of a second. The point is, some quarterbacks, Jordan Love throws this. That's what I'm telling you, and it is to his detriment at times. And we'll see that, and maybe we'll just stop after this to kind of show the difference. It is to his detriment at times. Aaron Rodgers will never throw this. Right here, he's looking downfield. This is where our guy is. Our guy is right here-ish. He's looking right there. He's got the ball in a position. His his feet are planted. His arm is there. He can easily throw it. Hesitates. Nah, forget it. I'm bailing. I'm out of here. Then he gets up and throws a fit and says terrible call and all that stuff. But the fact of the matter is it was third and 10. Because it was third and 10, we got put into a really bad situation. And there was a guy there, which, you know, it's hard to super criticize Aaron Rodgers for not throwing it. But at the same time, maybe if he just threw the ball, we would have had a big play. Again. This is, this is the, the difference. It, we, we always just look at it in terms of Aaron Rodgers is a great quarterback, so obviously he can do anything and everything and whatever. But there are certain things that Aaron Rodgers does that other quarterbacks wouldn't do and certain things other quarterbacks would do that Aaron Rodgers wouldn't do to where you look at it and, and you're trying to tweak Aaron Rodgers, and I don't know that that's going to get tweaked. I got it interrupted by the kid again. So um, I don't know where I left off, but let's just let's just move to Jordan Love. You got kind of a feel of how it works. And again, some of the plays and some of the throws are the same, but just kind of try to get a feel for the the rhythm and the flow of it and how it just feels natural. Whereas I think with Aaron, sometimes it's not whether it's because it's just it's it's not natural or because he just doesn't genuinely like it. So here's the the first play, and just remember what I said about that Geronimo play because this is very very similar. It's there, and he just throws it. Boom, boom, there he is, right out of his break, throws it, seven yards. So the 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 comment that I had said on the the Facebook or um, 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 the podcast was regarding a Facebook comment that Jordan Love and Aaron Rodgers are very similar quarterbacks. They both like to break the pocket and do all that kind of stuff. I, I very much disagree, and that's what we're going to look at here is what does Jordan Love look like just kind of working in this general system. And again, they, they spread them out. It's not all whatever. And here's one of the things that he does also is keeps it, doesn't get very much there. But now we're going to get a third and short. This is where you want to be. And again, you can see, first of all, here's your H back. So you got your three receivers. You got your running back. This is probably be A.J. Dillon. Here's Josiah DeGuara. This is your H back, your guy out here by himself. This is going to be Devante. Then you'll have probably Funches and Equinemius or whatever, right? Just Just to kind of try to visualize it. So again, here we go. Now he's, yes, he is kind of running out this way. That's the play design. But again, it's, we're just extending it so that these guys can come into their routes. He's going to see it right away. He gets his eyes there. As soon as he sees him, as soon as his eyes get to him, there's zero hesitation. And again, this is, this is what people love off platform back foot. He's going to throw it. 
over the defender, right into his arms. Again, it's it's in rhythm. There's no hesitation. There's no, I don't know about it. I'm not sure. Maybe this guy, maybe that guy, maybe I'll look somewhere else. Is The second his eyes get to that guy, he's, he's going to look this way first. The second his eyes get there, he's throwing it. Watch. There he is, throws it. Beautiful throw. And, and look at that in rhythm, in stride. Again, I'm, I'm not trying to rip on Aaron Rodgers, but we saw some throws where guys had to slow down, had to stop, had to turn around. His accuracy is unbelievable. He's got flaws for sure. And sometimes he's too decisive. He's too quick to throw the ball. His ability to throw to guys in stride is very, very, very underrated. Even on quick little, those guys running out into the flat. Like I said, with Aaron Jones, we see that all the time with Aaron Rodgers, especially Aaron Rodgers, but a lot of other quarterbacks where they got to, they got to stop, they got to turn around, they got to catch it low, and it just th- throws off the rhythm. And when your offense is entirely these quick little passes, being able to throw in rhythm makes the difference between imagine, imagine if this is slightly off target, what's going to happen. Look how close this guy is. If he throws it behind him, he gets tackled right away. The fact that he throws it in stride so he doesn't have to slow down, he got another 15 yards out of that. That is very, very underrated attribute as far as the accuracy of his throws and being able to hit guys in stride. Jordan Love is very, very, very good at hit at that. He's an extremely accurate quarterback. And again, I think he gets knocked because people see the interception numbers and they say his accuracy is garbage. No, his accuracy is incredible. It's, it's the fact that sometimes because he's just operating in the system, he sees the guy, he throws it, and sometimes you got defenders just squatting. And they're just like, yeah, I, I, I want you to throw it. They, they jump the route and pick him off. Not to say he's never been inaccurate, but I, I think um, – That's more the issue than anything. But again, just trying to look at how the rhythm and flow of this offense looks. Another example, I want to pause it so I get a chance to look. But again, he's just going to turn his eyes, and the second he sees it, he's very decisive. He's going to look, boop, there he is, waits one second for him to come open, and throws it to him. And and look at how many extra, again, this is what the Packers need. It's it's this guy, and he's not even that open. Um, But he's going to... And, and we saw this with MVS. It's almost the exact same thing, except instead of throwing it out here where he can't catch it, he puts it on him and gets it in stride so that this, what is it? Here's the line of scrimmage. He's not even two yards down the field. He's going to catch it. And he's going to put it out here. So he gets out in front of him. He gets out past him. He puts it on him in stride. So he catches, by the time he catches it, so he's two yards when he throws it. He's three, four, five-ish, six-ish yards by the time he catches it. And then again, imagine Josiah or or Jace, who are bigger body guys because they're tight ends. Could even do that with Funches if you want. Benefit of being a bigger body guy, you plow your way. And you again, you throw the ball when he's two yards down the field and you get a first down out of it. It's these simple, quick timing to bop, 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 bop. And he doesn't need to be wide open. The point of this is that the structure works so that you don't need to be wide open. Again, Josiah or Jace or whoever – He's just going to, I mean, that's not even a good route. He kind of stops and turns his body, but he's still, he's going to let him clear him out. He's going to throw it up high and away out here where he can still run as he throws it. And it's just, it's little stuff like that that everyone looks at and goes, who cares? No, that's what's important. Again, especially when you look at it in the context of what Aaron Rodgers does in this offense, where there's that half a second of, I need to think about it. Let me go check over here real quick. And then also when a guy does come open, you just, you kind of overthrow him a little bit. When you're watching Jordan Love, if you could see why if you're Matt LaFleur and you're watching all these plays from Aaron Rodgers and it's like, oh, come on, just do it, just do it. And then you watch Jordan Love and it's like, he just does it. He works within the city. He does everything that I dream of a quarterback doing in my style of offense. Jordan Love is that guy. Now, I'm not trying to say he's better than Aaron Rodgers. I'm not trying to say we should just give it to him. Jordan Love might be a garbage quarterback in the NFL. I have no idea. But again, the point is, Who's going to best run the Matt LaFleur offense? Jordan Love fits it like a glove. It's just, it's a beautiful fit. There's kind of an interesting, um, different sort of perspective. Here's an example. And again, we've seen where Matt LaFleur doesn't just call the quick little route. Sometimes he sends everybody. Here's kind of a similar situation where we got to figure out, okay, what would Jordan Love do? So everybody's kind of sending. He's looking. Nobody's open, right? So what does he do? He makes a decision. These guys aren't open. Very. So what what does Aaron Rodgers do in this situation? Remember with with um, Geronimo when he went down the field, nobody was open. What does he do? This exact same thing too. He's supposed to turn it up and get past him. He can't because he's here. So what do you do? You throw back shoulder. Look at it. 
He threw back shoulder. Now, maybe the, the ball should have been in a def- different spot. It looked like the receiver wasn't even expecting it. He didn't try to even slow down. Need better chemistry with your receivers. But again, this is, this is, this is brilliant. I mean, it's just, it's just what you do. This guy's covered, this guy's covered, this guy's covered, this guy's covered. What do you do? You got to make a decision. You have to be decisive. He is decisive. He looks at where the defender is. He looks at where he is. He's going to throw it back shoulder. Again, critique the throw if you want. Critique the wide receiver. It's irrelevant. He made the exact right decision. And again, there's no feeling of hesitation. You don't feel that tightness in his chest. You don't feel the panic. You can feel it with Aaron Rodgers. We feel it through the television. Like, God, he just, he's, he's as calm as can be. He's like, okay, it's just basic processing. And he's, it's kind of like what they say about soldiers, right? You, you don't want them thinking. You just do it. He's been programmed in his head. This is how it works. So he's just going through. Okay, they're running down the field, not open. I'm going to throw back shoulder. Just, just basic. This is what you do. He's got enough time. Just chucks it. He didn't catch it. Oh, well, move on to the next play. He just feels it's a calming presence for me. Because as good as Aaron Rodgers is, and as much as you know, when that thing breaks down, there's still a chance because he can do it. I'm just, I don't like that feeling anymore. I'm so tired of that feeling. And I would love it if Aaron Rodgers could just, just kind of have this aura a little bit. And, and, you know, when he does interviews, he's got that calming thing on the field. It's, it's, it's a constant anxiety attack. Again, exact same thing, but this is going to be deeper down the field. This isn't just going to be a quick little route, but it is the exact same thing. I'm going to go through my progressions. I'm going to see the guy. I'm going to throw it to the guy, and it is a beautiful pass. Plenty of time. This guy's coming open right here. Look at where his arm is. As soon as he comes out, he knew based on where everybody was. The defender's way back here. He knows when he gets to here, he's going to cut it in. He's going to have it right there, so he's already going to throw it. He's like, yep, that's it. Watch the throw right over this guy in front of this guy. And guess what? In stride. Do not underestimate the importance of that right in stride so that he can run and nearly gets a touchdown. Again, some quarterbacks are going to put this back here, down here, out here. All these different places mean he has to stop and he's going to get tackled right there. The fact that he gets it in stride and can keep running means he gets it all the way down to the one yard line. Very, very, very important. And you get that other extra little dimension from Jordan Love. He gives, He's going to keep. And again, one of the things, if you didn't watch my Jordan Love breakdown, he does a very good job of avoiding that sort of first contact. Oh, that was actually a pretty good. He, ju- he just slips past guys, and he does get popped a little bit at the end. We'll watch it, I guess, from here. But see, he makes that guy miss, and then he gets low. And he doesn't really take a direct hit, right? He takes one to the shoulder. He still gets a touchdown. So as much as some guys make you nervous when they run, um, Lamar, for example, sometimes it's kind of scary. Cam Newton, I think, is about the best I've ever seen in terms of his ability to just evade the hit. Right? Guys are trying to destroy him, and he just puts his body in the right spot to lessen the blow. And it's it's very frustrating because every time he runs against the Packers, I have that thought in my mind, hit him really hard because you want to punish him and make sure he doesn't want to run again. And they try to square up and hit him, and they just can't. I think Jordan Love does a really, really good job of that as well. So that's the extra little dimension from Jordan Love. And when you, again, think about the Matt LaFleur system, when you know you can do three, four, five, six, seven, eight, twenty different things from this one little personnel set, now you add an extra dimension. You better watch the quarterback as well. I can make it full screen again. Again, I mean, I'm, I'm not even skipping plays. Every single play is an example of what I'm talking about. Again, just feel the rhythm of this. I'll just play it all the way through. I'll not pause it. Just And that's it. Just the guy in the flat, and, and he's open, so we're going to do it. And he sees him right away, right? There's nobody here. It doesn't even matter what happens, right? Even if they start crashing down, I can still get it to him, and I can still get a completion. I believe Aaron Rodgers sees this, and then he starts to look this way. Because, well, maybe not, because these guys aren't even doing anything. But there, there's, there's just there's too many times, and, and there's another actual receiver, so maybe that's where he wants to go, but talking about Rodgers. Far too often, the quick, easy throw is what Rodgers doesn't want to do. Yes, I know he's there. Let's see what else we can get first, and then we'll come back to it. He has no desire to do that. First guy he's going to look at, he's open, throws it, boom, go. And look at look at what you get out of it. That's the point. It's not just a two-yard pass. It's not just a three-yard pass. Those can turn into first downs, and now look, it's first and 10. And that's all you had to do. And how many times did we see plays where guys went out into the flat and they, they, he didn't even get to that point in his progression? 
And then the defenders don't even try to challenge it. They'll stay back about five yards. But the difference is if you throw it instantly, you can have them continue running out and possibly get a first down. If you throw it to them late as they're just kind of squatting on it, they'll give you the pass, but they're going to hit you after three yards and you're not going to get more than the three yards. So if you're not going to do it right away, you're, you're going to only get three yards. If you do do it right away, though, you can get stuff like that. And again, Jordan Love is more than comfortable just taking those easy throws. And why not if it causes nine, 10 yard gains? This, by the way, has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. But if you want to see another reason to really like Jordan Love, because I know a lot of people are struggling with that, right? It's kind of like, well, <laughs> never mind. All right, I'll say it. it's like dad's new girlfriend. All right, anyways, but check this out. Here's Jordan Love, and just watch what he does on this play. Look at him. He blocked the dude into the ground. Come on, man. You're not going to – and look, usually you just get in the way a little bit, right? You're just going to kind of like, uh, uh. No, he's all out blocking the guy, and he drives him into the ground. Come on, man. That's your new quarterback, ladies and gentlemen. I don't care if he's sitting on the bench. I don't care if he never – he is a Green Bay Packer. He is number two in line. He is maybe the next quarterback to carry this. And even if it's in 2024, who can – get excited about the young man because he is a talented guy. He is not afraid. He has got courage in the pocket. He has got cojones the size of big, giant things. I don't know, whatever. The point is, the guy's not afraid to do anything. He'll run the ball. He'll block, stand in the pocket with courage. He's a great guy to have on the team. Just get excited about him, all right? Stop pouting. Be excited. All right, so here's exactly what I was talking about. Aaron Rodgers on a third and 15, not a good situation. Aaron Rodgers is not going to throw the ball unless a guy is 16, 17, 18 yards down the field. I mean, I'm, I'm generalizing. I'm sure it's, you know, somebody, oh, let me go find Okay, whatever. Sometimes he will. Jordan Love is going to throw to the guy that's open, and he's going to let him go make a play. Here you go. Now, it's not a terrible play, right? Here he comes across the middle. He's a playmaker. He's going to give it to him. He almost gets it. Look how close that is. And I guess we'll see if they... I don't know if they gave it to him or if this is just the next possession. Either way, again, that decisiveness, the quickness, that I know what 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 my options are. And if I see somebody, I'm going to give it to him. Because the, the other option would be don't throw to the wide open guy, don't take a chance, and let's just wait and see if anybody out there is going to make a play. And we know how that works out. They're not going to find anybody. Aaron Rodgers isn't going to see anybody. So then the pressure is going to come. He's going to scramble. He's going to end up throwing the ball away. And instead of getting 14 yards on a, on a third and 15, we're going to just get zero yards because he's going to throw it away. And again, sometimes it does generate a big play. Sometimes. Eight times out of 10, it's going to be a throwaway. Here's another really good example because it's it's sort of a nothing's there, so I'm just going to take what's there and and – if we see he's kind of waiting, 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 nobody's really open, but this guy's squatting here. And like I said before, if if you got a guy sitting here and this guy's going to wait, they're going to give you that throw, but you're not going to get any more yards. He's going to wait as long as he can. Maybe this is something here, but you do have this. Probably not. So smart not to throw it there. He's not going to wait. He's not going to scramble. He's just going to take it, right? Pressure's coming. Get the ball out. Take the yards. He is an expert in just take the yards. All right, fine. Forget it. Just just bail, right? Bail on the play. Give it to the check down. He had a half a second until he was about to get hit. He bails on it. And look how many yards he got. Again, trust your guys. Trust your tight ends. Trust your big bodied. And then look, we got a bunch of big body guys on this team. Trust them to get those extra yards. Take the three. See if they can turn it into eight. Because consistently, at least for Jordan Love, it has been. And let's not act like Utah State against Michigan State is in Utah State's favor. Right. This, this is a Michigan State is a much better team, but it, I'm still going to trust my guys to make plays against this defense because what other option do I have? But Aaron Rodgers, he has way too much faith. Jordan, Jordan Love has too much faith in himself. Aaron Rodgers has, I, I, I don't know, I guess you would say too much faith in his in his self, but he has faith that he's going to be able to make the big play. Jordan Love has too much faith in terms of believing that he can get the ball wherever he needs to get the ball. That's that's his kind of fatal flaw. We haven't seen that yet. I went to 2018 tape, so there's not very many interceptions here. Uh, 2019 is where you're going to see that more. But, um, you know, the again, the, the point is he's very comfortable taking the cheap, easy throws. And I, I think that is a massive benefit. And we all just want to see Rodgers do that, right? The pressure's coming. 
The guy that you wanted isn't there. I'm just going to take the cheap, easy throw. He gives it to him, and he gets eight yards out of it. And like I've said, there, there's a frustrating nature to that. He actually got nine. You can see it's second and one. There's 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 a sense of frustration on the defensive side of the ball because you just you, there's always that one. It's like, ah, come on. You know what I mean? You're doing a great job across the board, but that one guy, and then you give it to him, and then he picks up an extra four, and, and you're in a second and one situation. It's like, oh, come on. It's frustrating. And beyond that, it also tires out the defense. You're on the field longer. You're, you're stretching the field laterally, so guys have to chase a lot more. You're running the ball, throwing the ball, and it's very, very up-tempo. Get the ball, throw the ball. Get the ball, throw the ball. And you constantly keep this thing going. These guys are going to be so gassed by halftime, the second half is going to be just run up the score time. That's the goal anyways. Again, second and one. What are you going to do? Right away. Here's the guy. Throw it. There's never any question. There's never any hesitation. There's never looking at anybody else. The playmate, There's other options. The point is, though, I'm going to look here. I'm going to see this. It was probably designed. Uh, uh, he probably figured this out pre-snap that there's way too much space, so this is going to work. But either way, there's options. I'm not going to mess around and see if he can get past him. I'm going to throw it. I'm going to throw it now. And again, watch how he throws it in stride, the accuracy of the pass. He actually threw it out in front of him so that he kind of had to chase it and run forward a bit beautifully thrown ball so that by the time he catches it, it's almost already a first down and it's just, it's just automatic. But again, there's no hesitation. It's all in rhythm and a beautifully thrown ball. Because again, as much as you might say, well, that's easy. A lot of quarterbacks, honestly, and we've seen Aaron Rodgers do it. You throw it here. If he has to stop his momentum, turn his body, he has a chance to come up and stop him. A bat, a poorly placed ball on this throw, which happens way more often in the NFL than it should. And even including by Aaron Rodgers can kill this second and one and turn it into a third and two because the ball, instead of being put here, is put here. And again, he's kind of just slowly drifting this way. Aaron, Jordan Love throws the ball kind of out this way a little bit so that he's like, oh, shoot, and has to kind of shoot out this way. Whoa, go get it. He throws him into a first down. Massively underrated aspect of Jordan Love is the the – pinpoint accuracy of these throws and how important it is with these kinds of things. Look, if, if you've got a guy wide open down the field and you underthrow him by 10 yards, who cares? If he has to come to a complete stop, nobody cares and everybody's still going to be excited because, oh, it was a 40-yard pass. What a great quarterback. Nobody cares about pinpoint accuracy on a four-yard pass, but it is very, very important. And I'm not going to stop saying that. If, if every quarterback could do it, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But lots of quarterbacks, as we saw with Aaron Rodgers, don't do it. And that is problematic. And this is no massive credit to Jordan Love. It's just, let's get a feel for the offense. Here you go. Ready? Boop. There you go. Get the ball out quick. Don't get much, but so what? That's the offense. That's what we're going to do. Let's just see what this is, I guess. I don't know. It just went into the next play. So we couldn't really see anything. But again, the dec and it's not all just quick plays. He's decisive on deeper plays. The point is, He's going to go through the progressions as he's told, and the second he sees somebody that he thinks is going to come open, he throws it. And sometimes it's before it's out of its break, which shows that he's a pretty cerebral guy. He's got the intelligence to say, based on the leverage of the cornerback, where he is and where he's headed, and I know the route is a comeback, he's going to be open. So I'm going to cock my arm now, and as soon as he comes out of his break, I'm going to throw it. Boom, he's open. It's a second and eight. He throws a first down pass. So it's not, I'm not trying to make the case that he's inept and can only throw accurate four yard passes. We've seen some really good, slightly deeper intermediate type passes as well. The point is that I'm making, this is a quick timing rhythm offense at Utah state. And he works beautifully within it. You got to be decisive. You've got to get the ball out quickly and you got to get the ball out accurately. And Jordan love does all of that. All those highlight reels of him running to the side and throwing off his back foot. He can do it, and that's great. That's not why the Packers got him. That's his upside, and that's maybe why the Packers liked him as much as they did and wanted to trade up for him is the fact that he has that extra element. But you you sit and watch a game. You, you might not see him do that one time. We've seen one throw off his back foot, and it was a nice throw. But if you just watch this game, there's it's not just a bunch of that. To say that Jordan Love and Aaron Rodgers are the, are the same quarterback after watching this is is kind of silly. They're very different. Jordan Love wants to get the ball out just yesterday. I mean, again, just watch. There's a play. We'll let this one run out, and then we'll do the next one. Again, I don't know how long this took, but you can see it just got started. He And, he, and, and again, the accuracy of it, if he doesn't throw that in the right spot, because it looks like it was. So, as I said, ball comes out as he comes out of his break. But if you look, it's not completely without risk, this throw. It looks like that's the ball. I mean, if you put it. 
in this range, it's not great. He kind of throws it way back here, so he has to, again, chase it a little bit. You got to throw it back here so that he has to come back and get it because that defender can still come and get you. So, again, pretty accurate pass. So it's, 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 it's decisiveness, but it's also he's able to process where I'm going to throw it, when I'm going to throw it, and where to place the ball, and then put the ball exactly there. There's a lot going on upstairs that seems like it's just kind of a lazy, who cares kind of throw that's impressive. Right. And again, just watching other quarterbacks put the ball in bad spots at times can help you appreciate what Jordan Love can do. Here's another example. Fantastic play. But the the thing is, third and five. And again, not every play is going to be drawn up just perfectly for Jordan Love. Right. The Green Bay Packers are going to send guys down the field. Sometimes guys are going to be covered. The question is, what can you do when everything's not great? Because we know Aaron Rodgers can handle it. Let's take a look here. Five seconds left on the play clock. Got to hurry up. Third and five. Right. We know he wants to get the ball out quickly. He's going to go through his progressions. Well, not really. He's kind of keying in on somebody. But the point is, as things break down, he's going to stand in the pocket, not afraid, and watch this ball. Now, it was beautifully defended. But could that ball have been put anywhere better than that? You want to talk about accuracy and touch on a football? Again, you can critique whatever you want to critique. Maybe this should have been the throw here. I don't know. But that is a nice throw. And in fact, I'll, I'll take it a step further. That should have been the throw. And I, I don't know. Again, the problem is you start going through your progressions. He liked it and he threw it, right? It was decisiveness. And sometimes that is his flaw. He was too decisive. He trusts that I can put the ball in a perfect spot. And he did. It just couldn't have been defended any better. If he had gotten off of this and said, no, nah, let's look this way, he could have got the ball there and it probably would have been a first down. But he didn't. He said, okay, this is my first read. And I think I can do it. I trust myself. That was a problem, but you can't tell me this ball could have been thrown any better. Look at that. I mean, it was it was uncatchable because the defender did such a great job of getting his ball, his hand on the ball. But man, I just even when he does the wrong thing, it's kind of impressive. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. If you hate Jordan Love, you're probably mad at him for this play. And and again, probably shouldn't have trusted his guy that much and trusted his arm that although his arm absolutely did the right thing. The guy just had no ability to get separation. And rather than trusting your guy, you should have went to the next read, which, again, is scary, right? There's risk involved because if you come off of this and there's nothing and you go here and he's covered, what do you do now? You take a sack. So there's risk involved. If you if you even think there's a half a chance that we can make this work, you kind of want to throw it because, again, it's it's this or potentially maybe there's nothing there and I'm, gonna, I'm about to take a sack because these guys are coming. He's about to slip through here. He maybe he knows that he doesn't know what's going on behind him. And you can see he gets hit as soon as the ball comes out. So had he decided not to go there and turned his head, I don't think he gets the ball out. Not that he knew that, but there's, there's rationale behind that. And again, it's just, it's just, he's decisive and he's calm and he's cool. And he's like, no, that's good. He throws it and just throws the absolute perfect ball. So again, could have maybe made a better decision, but I'm not mad at him for making the decision. And the ball was as perfectly thrown as anybody in history could have ever thrown a ball. And then we just get right back into the swing of it. Bup, bup, bup. There you go. Ball's out. And and again, I mean, this was the design all the way. So it's not like he's just going through his reads or whatever. Um, he knew what he was going to do, but watch the placement of the ball. Out in front, he has to extend his arms and run toward it. You cannot throw that any more perfect, and it allows him to get a full head of steam and do that. First down. So it's 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 play design, it's rhythm, all of which he plays within, right? All of that. But it's also the placement of the ball. He's the right quarterback for this system. He's decisive, he's quick, he doesn't take any extra time, and he's going to put the ball exactly where it needs to be to get this guy out in front of where it needs to go, get a full head of steam, and on a first and ten, Quick little throw. And again, where are we going? We're going this way. And all these guys have to chase. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six defenders. You're telling me you had six defenders out here? No. You got these guys all having to chase and chase and chase and chase. Look, he's got to chase. He's got to run all the way out there. You're getting this guy tired. Look at him. Is that a linebacker? These guys, you're, you're exhausting them. So he's got to run all the way over there. These guys are all chasing. Everybody's got to run laterally. You keep running, throw to this side, throw to that side. You're tiring out this defense, and, and you're, you're not doing much yourself. You don't have to do much. These guys up here don't have to block for more than a half a second. Your offensive line is doing fine. 
and you end up picking up 10 yards in the in the process just because eh, quick little thing whatever it's frustrating it's exhausting it's just it's 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 and and it, when you get the ball out as Jordan Love does in two and a half seconds which is faster than anybody in the NFL did in 2019 2.51 Andy Dalton did, which was the fastest of anybody. He gets it out in 2.5 seconds on average. Um, you're not getting many sacks, so you're not getting to the quarterback, and that in and of itself is frustrating. You can't get to the quarterback. You can't stop the offense. On top of Matt Lafleur drawing up these plays and confusing you, and everything is all messed up. It's just it's 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 wildly frustrating. And um, again, Jordan Love just fits perfectly. Not saying we need to push out Aaron Rodgers. I'm just saying I'd like to see Aaron Rodgers look a little bit more like this once in a while. And what I mean by that is just get the ball out quickly and put it in the right spot. If you see a guy, just throw it to him. Stop saying, eh, I'll come back to it if that doesn't work, and then look somewhere else and trust that these wide receivers who aren't very good are probably beating somebody down the field. And then when you find out they aren't, you go back to your check down. He's already covered. So then you scramble and then you throw the ball away. Just throw the ball. Throw it. Oh, here's another example of a deep shot. And, and understand, all these quick, short little passes – a lot of times, and you see this a lot with the Bears and a lot of other teams that do this, you're setting up the big play. Here's an example of when they're about to take a shot. I don't know what the design was. I don't know any of that, but Jordan Love decides, now I'm going to take a shot. Again, he doesn't have very good weapons. He doesn't have very good wide receivers, so his guy isn't open. But watch the placement of the ball. Are you kidding me? If that's Devontae Adams, that's caught. Devontae Adams catches that. We've seen highlight reels of, of balls basically grazing the chest of the defender going into the arms of this guy. We've seen that before. This is an Aaron Rodgers level accuracy throw. This this is the difference between him making a throw and going, oh, why did you throw the incomplete pass and the stats don't look good and nothing looks good and being an Aaron Rodgers level highlight is this guy catching it. That's it. Look at this. And, and, and the confidence, just, just, yep, yep, there he is. Just low, throw it up. Look at that. Right across his face, right here. If he just catches it, that is a, a an unbelievable highlight. He just doesn't catch it. I'm, I'm just, I, I, I gotta be, I'm, I'm a little enamored. And, and listen, I understand. I've got my issues with Jordan Love. I said Jordan Love is Mitch Trubisky. That's why I don't want him. The problem I have with Jordan Love is if you watch in 2019, he'll do this all the way down the field. Beautiful drive, just accurate, beautiful, deep throw, all this great stuff. And then at the very wrong time, right as you get down to the five, he throws a pick, right? 2019 was a nightmare. And if that is what carries on into the NFL, he's going to be Mitch Trubisky. The difference is if 2018 is a better representation, he's closer to to Mahomes than he is um, to Mitch Trubisky. That's the spectrum. And, and when you talk about sitting him for two years and grooming him, the potential of Jordan Love is very, very, very high. Very high. This is, this is next level type stuff. The confidence, the arm talent, the ability to run, the ability to block, whatever that's worth. Everything there is incredible. But again, the problem is if, we, if he gets pushed into this, in, into the NFL, especially if he were drafted by a team like the Bengals, and sat behind a terrible offensive line, was like, okay, go out and do it. He would be Trubisky. He would be worse than Trubisky. It would be a nightmare. No offensive line. Not, I guess he's got some decent weapons to work with. It, it would be a nightmare. But we're talking about learning from Aaron Rodgers, sitting behind the Green Bay Pack, uh, Packers offensive line, working with guys like Devontae Adams. The potential to be a very, very, very good quarterback in a couple years. I'm just trying to get you to be a little excited. It's not impossible. It's not impossible. The arm talent of this guy, the accuracy of his throws, the confidence of his of his throws, he gets me excited, man. He really, really does. And I know we're not going to see him for a while, and I know it was, it was at least in 2020, a wasted first-round pick, and that's extremely frustrating, especially since they took a running back in the second round. I'm just trying to get you to be a little bit excited about it and to understand that this is what Matt LaFleur wants and needs from Aaron Rodgers. And if it doesn't work out, he does fit. He does fit the Matt LaFleur system. And in two years, if we do move on from Aaron Rodgers, if Jordan Love can meet his full potential, he is going to be a very, very, very lethal quarterback in the NFL. Here might be an example, a little bit of the, the downside of Jordan Love and the difference between Jordan Love and Aaron Rodgers. We talk about that hesitation with Aaron Rodgers. Jordan Love doesn't have it. He doesn't hesitate. He sees a guy he wants to throw it to, but watch this. He sees the guy and he says, you know what? I can do it. And that's every, every, every Jordan Love interception that I can think of is you can read Jordan Love's mind 
And he says, you know what? I can do it. I can make it work. He doesn't have time. And he's going to try to force this. And you can see he's still, even with a guy wrapped around him, he's still trying to make it work, right? He's going to torque his arm. He's going to torque his shoulders and try to get enough of it out there to, to get the ball where it still needs to go. He believes in himself too much. And look at him. He's still like, oh, did I make it? Did I get there? Look at this. It just kind of hung in the air, right? I mean, it was nowhere near. It didn't have any power. It didn't have anything. That is the downside of Jordan Love. There's that, and then there's the throws where he just he turns his body, he sees a guy, he throws it, he doesn't recognize the defender just squatting there, and he gets an interception. That happened all throughout 2019. That's why there were so many interceptions. It's not a lack of arm talent. It's not bad. There were some bad passes, but for the most part, it's just trusting yourself too much. I'm going to get the ball there. I can get. I can do it. I'm fine. It's the opposite of of Aaron Rodgers, who says, who probably can do it, and is like, eh, I don't know. If this guy gets his hands on me, it might float in the air and it might get intercepted. I'm not going to do it. Aaron Rodgers isn't going to throw that ball. He's going to take a sack. And in that instance, that would be the right call. Take the sack. Take the sack. Or throw it away if you can if you can manage to throw it out of bounds if you've got that much uh, power in your arm. But you probably shouldn't even do that because then it'll float and it'll get picked anyways. Um, so, again, that would be – in my estimation, the downside, but we've got two years to try to work that stuff out of them. Look at this. So this is right after the interception. It's the next series, and we're just going to try to get back in rhythm. Again, look how just there's no hesitation. And again, I don't think Aaron Rodgers throws this, and he probably shouldn't. It's way too close, but he has no fear, and he just throws it. Oh, yeah, that's no problem. And watch just how narrowly picked this is, but how beautiful of a throw it is. And it's just a quick little throw. Boop. Look at that. I mean, my goodness. Look at how close that is. As he's crashing down, he's going to put it. And, and again, if he throws it behind him, it's picked or at least deflected. Puts it out and away. So he's, his hands are reached out in front of him. And he's able to just continue his momentum and get a first down. But just how narrowly that was almost picked. And how Jordan, Love, he doesn't hesitate. Just, yep, there he is and throws it. Throws it out in front of him a little bit. Not way out in front of him, but in front of him enough. The defender extends as far as he can. And the ball basically grazes his fingers, but he can't quite get there. Just the, the confidence of just, there it is. I'm just going to throw it. There's the pick. Come on. Just look. There he is. Boop. No problem. And, and again, that's the frustrating nature of it. If, if, this is, if Michigan State is the Packers, and we've, we've been against guys like this where it's like, you're so close. And it's like, you know, you almost want to just call the quarterback lucky because it's like, oh, you're just getting lucky. We were right there. If, if you if you didn't see it, and, uh, and you, you want to justify why you're just narrowly missing. And it's just frustrating and it's aggravating. But the thing is, he's going to do that to you all day. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know you're so close. Better luck next time. Okay, whatever. I don't know, man. That was a great throw. I feel like you've gotten kind of the full idea. But again, here's where it is. There's the easy throw balls. Look at look at his arm. He already knew, right? He's not even worried about what's going to happen here. He's not even going to bother going to the next read. He knows that this guy's going to come here. He's going to go that way, and there's nobody there. So it's open. I know it's going to be open, so I'm just going to throw it. And, you know, I mean, he did have to spin, but the, the, the options are, I guess you put it here and have him try to carry it out or just kind of turn him in this way. I don't know. Maybe it just wasn't a very good throw, but either way, Worked out fine. And again, just these quick little things. It's a first and 15 because of a penalty. Got 15, 16, 17, 18, 18-ish yards, 18, 19 yards on those quick little throws. That's that. It, listen, whether you like it or not, this is where Matt LaFleur is going. This is what he wants. A quarterback that's just going to say, here's my first read. He's going to be open. I'm just going to throw it and let my guys make plays. The, the, the issue is Aaron Rodgers has to let his guys be the heroes. Right. Occasionally he's going to get his shot, but it can't be every play. It can't be every single down, every single snap. I'm going to look down the field and try to make that that throw. The one that makes. And I'm not saying this is what Aaron Rodgers is thinking. I'm just saying that's that's what it is. Every time he has to do the heroic thing, every play, whether it's first and 15, first and five, third and 40, it doesn't matter. You always feel like Aaron Rodgers has this on his shoulders. And it's always a question of, oh, what can Aaron Rodgers do with this? This offense is dump it off and let's see what they can do with it. Give it to him and let's see what what kind of a play they can make. And they're making plays. And we know our guys can make plays. Aaron Jones can make plays. I'm sure A.J. Dillon can make some plays. DeGuara and um, 
Sternberger and we, I mean, Devonte, give me a break. Of course he can make plays. And we got these bigger guys that can, that can, you know, if you just throw little screen passes just by falling forward and breaking a couple tackles, they can get four yards out of it. So that, that has to be sort of a shift for everybody is, is to say, this isn't Aaron Rodgers is the superhero anymore. This isn't Aaron Rodgers dragging this football team anymore because he has nothing. And he has a coach that says, look, I just want you to go out there and force a victory out of this. Cause we have no defense. We have nothing. It's you and your wide receivers going out, saving the day. Aaron Rodgers has to get out of that. He has help now. He has a coach. I'm not, I know he doesn't have help. They didn't draft anybody. Well, okay. He only has Aaron Jones and, and, Dylan and Sternberger and Deguara and Devante and right he, he, and Funches he, and the the point is though what he has is Matt Lafleur and Matt Lafleur is going to say look I'm going to make this real simple for you and I'm going to put it on them to make a play just give them the ball and let's see what they can do and that has to be a shift in Aaron Rodgers' head he has to be able to say all right here you go he's just distributing. And occasionally he gets to be the superhero. Occasionally we're going to drop a a big shot down the field and he gets to just haul off and launch that thing down there and make a beautiful throw and be the hero and and make the highlight reel and all that stuff. But for the net, for the first 15 plays, he's just a distributor. He's just a game manager. I just, not that he's unwilling to do it. It just, you can just see the gears turning in a different direction where he just, he just doesn't operate that way. It's just like, mm, I don't know about that. Let's see what's going on over here. I don't really like that he's kind of open, but I'm not really going to look over there. And I can probably throw it, but I kind of don't want to. And I'll, I'll half throw it and then decide not to and then take a sack. Got to just be quick, man. You got to just do it. Just feel it and do it. And he, he it, that's why he doesn't have any interceptions. I mean, part of it is accuracy and just being a good thrower. But a lot of it is just if there's any question, he's just not going to throw it. And that's why there's so many throwaways and everything else. Jordan Love's just going to throw it. And that is absolutely to his credit. There he is. Boom, throw it. Again, it's, it's such a beautiful mix of short, quick pass, short, quick pass, short, quick pass. And then again, you're going to get your opportunity to be the hero. And it's just a matter of making the beautiful throw. Watch this. You want to talk about Jordan Love and can he take that step to be Aaron Rodgers, right? Okay, so you can dink and dunk down the field. What about actually making the big throws? Look at this. Are you kidding me? Are you even, are you kidding me? He's not even open. (laughs) What What is that? What is that? Again, this isn't about, you know, him throwing off platform and that's the only thing he can do. And otherwise he's garbage. This, this is a unbelievable, unbelievable throw. And again, it's one of the, oh, you got lucky. It almost got tipped. Look at this. Look at that. There's the ball. There's the defender's hand. Here's his guy just catching it in between all these guys. Are you even kidding me? What is that? It's beautiful. And again, this is the full, and and nobody wants to give Jordan Love credit for any of this. He's just a guy that throws a bunch of interceptions. Got to wrap this up because the kids keep interrupting, but... Again, it's it's not just okay. He's he's got some talent. He can throw off his back foot, but otherwise, he's just a garbage quarterback. Because that's kind of the feeling. That's kind of the narrative. He's not good, but you know, maybe if he you know can turn that little Superman throw off his back foot thing into becoming a good quarterback, then he can actually be good. But otherwise, he's just a garbage quarterback that occasionally makes superhero type throws. No, nope. He's a great quarterback that occasionally makes really dumb decisions, and and when you kind of have these long drawn out drives, if you make bad decisions at a high enough rate, you're going to ruin all these drives, right? If it, let's say it's once in every 20 throws and your average drive is 17, you know, plays or whatever, um, about 50%, you know, depending on how many times you run, how many times you throw, let's say 50% of your drives are going to end in interceptions. That's horrible. That's the issue though. It's not that his accuracy is ridiculous. His confidence is ridiculous. His, I mean, we're talking deep accuracy, intermediate accuracy, short field accuracy. He doesn't get credit for the things he should be getting credit for. Again, it's not the Pat Mahomes running to the sideline, throwing with his eyes closed down the field throws that make Jordan Love a prospect that the Packers need. It's this kind of stuff. It's the decisiveness. It's the ridiculous accuracy of his throws. And the thing that needs to be fixed isn't how to become accurate. That is such a garbage narrative. He's one of the more accurate throwers I think I've ever seen. 
it's not that he needs to be more accurate. It's that he needs to be smarter with some of his decisions and maybe a little less confident and maybe taking a half a second more when you see a guy that's open to say, okay, maybe they're just squatting on this, so I shouldn't throw it, right? They're baiting me. See that they're baiting you and don't throw it. And again, I feel like that's something that can be coached out of you. Maybe not. I don't know. But if that's your, like, if, if your interceptions are just garbage throws, and that's that, that's sort of my issue with my own diagnosis is that I said he's Mitch Trubisky because his plays end in interceptions at really inopportune times. The difference though, is Mitch Trubisky throws garbage passes at inopportune times. Jordan Love makes garbage decisions at inopportune times. I, Mitch Trubisky throws balls. That it's like, where was that even going? Like, there's nobody there except the, the defense. That is a big key difference. And, and again, being able to sit Jordan Love and all that. I don't know. I mean, it's frustrating that we're not going to get to see him for a while. Hopefully, we at least get to see him in preseason. Although, he'll probably throw picks, and then everybody will lose their mind and say, see, this was a garbage pick and all that. And the media will lose their minds, and fans will lose their mind, whatever. I still just want to see him because I think he's a special, special talent. And again, if he can just iron out a couple details, he's got the upside of of being you know, a Deshaun Watson or whatever, right? I mean, he has that level of ability. I'm just, I'm just excited. I don't know. I don't know what else to say about it. And I've, ma- I've made my point, but it's just, here's, here's another one again, quick, easy, great throw. And there you go. I mean, it's just, I, I don't know. We'll just let this run out for a while and see what happens. I haven't watched any of this beforehand. He's going to keep it. So there you go. You got that other dynamic. And again, doesn't really take on a, a, Solid blow, and he's a big guy, so he powers right through that. I don't know what happened there. If they, for whatever reason, it's a new series. See that? <sighs> Let's back that up. This is a situation where he needed to step up, right? Step up in the pocket, let these guys block around, and then dump it. And because it kind of got messed up, the ball got thrown away. Again, these are these are little iron out things, and I've never seen that happen before. It's not like it's a hey. There's uh, my buddy Roquan. I like that guy. It's not like this is a consistent problem. That was just a, a mental lapse. Like, come on, just just step up and make it whatever, right? So that didn't pan out super well. There you go. There's another bad decision. See, as I run this out now, that was all the bad plays. There's a great throw right in stride. And I don't know what happened with that bad throw or why he did that. Ball's out quick. First down. See what I mean about the rhythm, though? Do, do, is this what the Packers look like? It just feels different. I mean, the formations all look kind of similar, right? You got your tight end. You got your two wide receivers. You got your running back out there. Same kind of stuff. It's just, it's very quick. It's very decisive. Occasionally, you get a second call, and it kind of slows things down, but they just want to go quick. There you go. Ball's out. There you go. There's no question about it, and sometimes they don't make a play, I guess, but who cares? Give them an opportunity to make a play. Second and seven. Oh, nothing, nothing. There you go. See, none of these plays happened until I decided to run this out. Now, all of a sudden, everything's kind of falling apart. But, I mean, again, decisiveness. What are you going to do? I don't know. Apparently, there's nothing. Third and seven now. Ball's out off his back foot. Nothing there. All right. Anyways, these are all garbage plays now. But you get the point, right? It's a different feel and a different rhythm than what the Green Bay Packers are currently doing. And the idea that Rodgers and Love are the same guy is not true. They are very different in that Aaron Rodgers wants to wait and he wants to hit the guy 15 yards down the field. Jordan Love wants to throw to the guy five yards down the field, but he has the ability to throw it down the field. And then there's also the decision-making when things break down. And we've been seeing nothing but broken down plays here in what Jordan Love is doing. Um, And we know that, I mean, they probably would have made similar decisions here on those last couple of broken down plays, but we know that Jordan Love at times will be a little bit too risky and Aaron Rodgers airs on the side of being too cautious. Those are big differences as well. So anyways, hopefully this was at least having a visual representation of what I've been talking about was somewhat helpful. Um, again, it's just a different feel. And I think the the feel of Utah State's offense, just that quick, get the ball out, no hesitation kind of offense is what Matt LaFleur is looking for. And it's not so much this is why we not need to push out Aaron Rodgers. That's not the case I'm making. It's this is what we need to see. If we start seeing the Green Bay Packers offense look more like this, then we know, look out, right? Now it's about to happen. If it's still the same old, and Aaron Rodgers is always going to be cautious. That's not going to change. He's going to refuse to throw that one, but that's fine. That's a separate issue. That's Things aren't really going very well. Maybe I can squeeze it and I'm not going to. That's going to happen fine. 
the point is though, when you got a guy that's open right there, just throw it to him, make it a make it a nice throw out in front of him so he can catch it in stride and run. And just let's just let's just do it. We saw it a little bit with the Raiders, right? Did it for a little while and it looked beautiful and you get the rhythm and everything's going great. We just need that consistently through entire games, through the entire season, not just a couple plays against the Raiders and then everything else looks clunky and ugly. And then you win 13 games and everybody looks at you and says, you did not deserve 13 games because your offense looks like garbage and they're not exactly wrong. It's it because it's it's good because you have a really talented quarterback and guys like Devontae and Aaron Jones who can make really big plays, but it doesn't look good. It doesn't look pretty. It's sloppy. This is what it looks like when it's cleaned up. Anyways, there you go. I'm done. 